Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and today I'm planting most of my potatoes. Now we've got about, I think, three or four tubs of overwinter potatoes. So those were sown in August and we're still harvesting those and they're still in pretty good condition. We've got a few weeks supply in the store. Most of our early potatoes are in the polytunnel and I've got about I don't know, six or eight tubs or something like that uh, there. So the, they're going to last us. Uh, we've got enough potatoes to last us well into sort of June, uh, June time. And then in July, I've got some early baking potatoes that I've got planted in one of my coal frames. And then we come on to the potatoes that we've got in the back garden. And I've got some Swift and some Charlotte. Most of those are planted. Uh, I'm about to plant King Edwards, Vivaldi and Sarpamira, so a nice selection. And I've got quite a few nice little locations in the garden. Um, potatoes don't want, they want a lot of sun, but they want a little bit of shade, um, you know, during part of the day, um, you know, just blasting them with sun all the way through the whole, um, whole of the day is a bit much for them in containers and all my stuff is in containers in the back garden, all my potatoes anyway. So uh, I'll show you the different locations and what I'm going to sow and then I'll show you how I plant them. Well, there's nothing special about that and so let's get on. So this is the main area on this patio where we're going to be planting potatoes. I'm going to put King Edwards in here, lovely sunny spot. Sarpamira down the edge there next to the wall. Sarpamira will grow nice and big. So having them against the wall just provides a little bit more protection from the wind. And in these smaller containers here, um, that's where I'm gonna do the charlots. And all the way around that side of the wall there, uh, that's where I'm going to do peppers and tomatoes most of my peppers and tomatoes will be down on the allotment but uh, I've got a few that I'm going to do in the back garden just for convenience and then in that corner there and that corner there that's where I'm going to plant the Vivaldi so a nice range of potatoes quite a few nice little locations all of them get a little bit of shade during parts of the day so let's get on get some planted so they all get the same nutrients, just a generic multi-purpose compost. That's whatever we could get at the garden centre. It's tricky getting compost at the moment, but we managed to get a few bags of this. Um, this is Marshall's Organic Extra, which is concentrated farmyard manure composted with seaweed. And then just some generic bloodfish and bone meal. So about a handful of that, two handfuls of that, one bag of those. So uh, I'm gonna get planting. So this is what you want, nice and firm. If it's slightly spongy on the surface, that's okay, but it doesn't wanna be soft. Nice chits on there. These are the King Edwards. They've been on a moderately sunny, coolish windowsill. Um, if they go on a too sunny, then uh, they can get a little bit leggy and a little bit soft. But those are just about perfect. Now I can never remember to uh, fertilize my potatoes with a liquid fertilizer. So I really like a nice mix of slow release fertilizers. And this farmyard manure is the slowest of all of them. And so these containers at the moment are just full of about eight inches of manure, not of compost rather. And I'm actually going to push the potatoes down to about six inches. So that's 
a double handful of this stuff, basically two handfuls, and one handful of the fish blood and bone. And then as I fill it up, I'll put some more fish blood and bone in the top level. And then that will just gradually filter down to the root zone as I water. But fish blood and bone is another really nice slow release fertilizer. If you don't use these slow release ones, then a lot of people recommend that you use tomato fertilizer instead. And then just work that in. So that's what we end up with. And that's about how deep it goes. So probably sort of length of my hand, five inches, something like that. And then potatoes. I'm putting two of these in because I want big potatoes. Basically like that. And if you want big potatoes, normally you'd reduce the number of chits, but because a lot of these have only actually got two or three chits on them, or spruts or sprouts, uh, then uh, that's fine. So actually in the end, I had uh, enough seed potatoes, so I decided to put three in the ones at the back and two in the ones at the front. So it'll be interesting to see what the difference in yield is between those two. And I've just watered those in and I've just rummaged down to the bottom and it's nice and moist now all the way down to the bottom. So uh, I know they're going to get off to a good start. And I'm now just going to fill these containers right up to the top. Well, almost to the top anyway, leave it about an inch for watering. And probably if I can get hold of it for uh, a mulch of wood chips like I've done with these, just to reduce the uh, evaporation from the top. One of the issues with growing in these potato containers, uh, these are 35 litre ones, is that they do get very hot. The black plastic gets very hot and you do need to water them a lot and ideally with rainwater, but obviously in summer it's pretty much impossible to uh, get enough rainwater. So I'm going to mix rainwater with uh, tap water just for practicality. Um, and if you've got the option, and obviously I don't because I'm on a patio, um, it's really nice to bury these containers about six inches into soil, so about this sort of level, and then the roots from the potatoes will come out of these holes. Um, and Steve from the uh, channel Green Side Up is a good uh, video where he demonstrates that uh, process, and I'll link that in the description for this video. So if you've got the space uh, on an allotment or something like that, that's a great way to do it. Uh, and if not, just be sure to have a hose pipe. And then if there's any big lumps in your compost, uh, like there is in this one, just break those up a little bit. Little lumps aren't an issue. That little lumps are actually quite nice because they uh, hold the water nicely. So yeah, that's pretty much okay. And then one more handful of this good fish and bone. And then that's kind of the longest, most nerve wracking wait now until for these till about September time and then you know whether all this preparation was actually worth it. And potatoes I think are, in our case at least, one of the few crops that we can be pretty much completely self-sufficient in from the back garden. Uh, everything else requires the allotment and more space um, but uh, and, and obviously protection over winter. But potatoes, because they store so well and because you can grow them in such small space in containers, um, yeah, you can be, uh, for a small family like ours, pretty much self-sufficient all year round, which is really nice.
So now we're down to the finishing touches. I like to just compress the edges down like this. And the reason I do this is if you don't do that, the water just tends to run down the side of the pot and out the bottom, never get into the roots. Um, and then I just make a slightly concave sort of shape to the surface. Again, just to guide the water into the center. And then I put wood chip on. Now, the thing is with potatoes, basically most of the action is taking place in that bottom six inches there. And uh, that's where all the roots are. And then there might be a little bit of root in, in this sort of region. But most of this area here is just to keep the sunlight as well. It's a, it's a water reservoir, a nutrient reservoir. And it also just keeps the sun off the potatoes. Um, and wood chip serves that purpose. It's a lot cheaper than compost. Uh, and it's much more water retentive than compost is and I'm running out of compost. So I'm gonna get that done. Plus weeds don't grow in it, which is quite nice. And it also goes a long way because you're not kind of compressing this down. Um, you want it as loose as possible. Basically, you're just trying to keep the sunlight and the wind off the surface of the compost. And you can see on those over there that uh, the potatoes push through it, no problem at all. So that's it all done. Next up, the charlottes. And these are the second early, and they're going in these much smaller containers, 20 litres, two potatoes per pot. So I'm all done. I really love the pota having potatoes in the back garden. It's just really easy to manage them, but I just love watching them grow. <laughs> it's just a real sheer delight to us. We don't mind having a few plastic containers in the garden. We just love all that life and being surrounded by all that uh, produce that uh, we're going to be eating for the rest of the year. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this quick video and I'll see you soon.